I, I'm 25, <laughs> but oh, okay. I've, I've been producing since I was 15 and yes, like my dad's a, a drummer. Time. So I've done like wow. music as a kid. He had like a music school in England. It was a whole thing. Right, let me do the intro because this is getting deep I know, so I know. fast. <laughs> and speaking of book, we're going to do a tarot reading today. Finally, it's been a minute for all my witches. <laughs> Hello everyone and welcome to the House of Royale. This is episode 59, I think. We're almost at episode 60, so it's very celebratory being here with such a fabulous producer, engineer, recording artist, the whole thing. It's just unreal. And the timing, nothing is a coincidence. Uh, the universe always has a plan and the timing of this artist coming to the show today is perfect. But before I introduce her, we are artists and we need you guys to help us pay for all of our shit, like our equipment, our costumes, our hair, our makeup. Ain't that the truth. Okay. And Ray just did a whole speech on how songwriters should have their room and board and flight and all of that paid for if they're traveling to write songs or to produce or whatever. So that being said, go to patreon.com slash house of Royale and give us $10,000 and I will give Kadara five. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, okay. I won't complain right? if I get 5K. You know I'm what I mean? I'm just saying. That's a music video. That's a bunch of new songs. Like, yeah. that's more that we can do for you. Right. So, Ex And that's my point. And I know that there's so many, especially you men out there who are high rollers, you're looking for somewhere to put your dough. Give it to us. I mean, instead of giving it to just random girls at the bar who are like gonna take advantage of you. Ooh. Like, why don't you give it to actual girls who will go and invest it? Like, you know that if you give money to an artist who has been at this for years and years, that money is 100% going to make, like it's gonna go towards making more art. Yep. And feel free to DM us and be like, hey, if I give you guys 10 grand, can I suggest what I would like to see from you? Like a custom exactly. order, honey. No, literally. I'll write a whole ass business plan. <laughs> I'll send it to you. <laughs> I'll be like, let's use some of the money to hire someone to tell us what to do with our money. Right. Like, we'll put the <laughs> microphone in our feet and sing for you with our feet. Like, whatever you want. I don't give a fuck. Like, just... D Venmo us or whatever like okay so anyway that is all I have to say about that and I will see you guys in a minute love you bye so true though it's like why are you spending money buying Birkins oh my like fuck. for random girls who are just gonna take the Birkin and leave when you could actually be making a Preach. huge difference. Like not just in an artist's life, but this is like for the culture. This is like for the whole world. Like you could be making a difference in the whole world by investing in the right artist. Yeah. And also who's to say that that artist, you might find love with her. I mean, who knows? you never know. <laughs> you never know. If the money right. <laughs> anyway, money okay. right, pussy tight. I, exactly, always. I am going to intro our artist really quickly, you guys. She is a powerful woman out here in Los Angeles, California. She is a part of the movement of women coming up to the forefront and changing the fabric of the music industry because she is an engineer and a producer, which is still so rare and we are out here encouraging every single female singer recording artist performer sit down in front of your computer and start opening a DAW, learning the software and start engineering because the boys had their turn for thousands of years and now it's time for the women to win these grammys and win songwriter of the year and win producer of the year and album of the year because you produced it okay this woman is not only a recording artist, a performer, she's a costume designer. You're gonna see her hair. She's basically a hair artist, entrepreneur. Please give a warm, powerful welcome to the gorgeous Kadara. Oh my God, that was, I think, the nicest introduction I've ever received from anyone ever. It's true. That was so nice, thank you. I ha I'm covered in goosebumps because the spirit of our ancestors and our witches are here, you guys. Like, it's just so powerful. Yeah. I feel it. Yeah, I'm getting goosebumps now, too, actually. I'm getting, like, a little chill. 
Hell yes. And also, when we do the tarot poll, speaking of powerful women, you were just talking about Gaga, who is such a powerful influence for all of us. She's also on the computer engineering. Here yes. is her tarot card. This is the tarot for Gaga. Yes. And at the end of the episode, we will revisit the tarot deck by CardsyB.com. Kadara, let's start from the beginning. Where are you from and how did music come into your life? I'm from Boca Raton, Florida. Oh my God. <laughs> Ariana Grande. Yes. Yes. Wow. I'm not sure if this is true, but I actually went to this one like musical theater dance place, you know, as a kid and or like a preteen and they said that ariana grande had like gone there for like a year or something it's believable because i know she's from there but i'm not sure a hundred percent if it's true but you know i bet you she did <laughs> and her energy is in the energy of your music definitely <laughs> i mean take it and run with it you know i love ariana grande i was actually yeah. watching reruns of victorious a couple nights ago for no reason yeah and i was like dang like it's crazy her character you know? Anyway. Yeah, she's such an amazing actress. Yeah, and, and then the she would start singing, like, just crazy good. I mean, and then to, to the juxtaposition of that with her ditzy character on the right. show was just, like, very, very... It's like you could see that she was going to become what she has become. Yep. Yeah, and the clips that she posts of her sitting at the computer and comping her vocals, I'm like, thank you for posting that because it's, like... No, she's not just putting on these cute, hot little outfits with a ponytail. Like, no, she is engineering, which is like, yes, what beauty we all need to and be doing. brains. It's mm -hmm. absolutely necessary. And we need to see more of that because there's I think a lot of women that do do it, but they're not necessarily posting about yes. it or showing it because, you know, we've been made to feel like nobody really cares to see us do that. Yep. You know, they just want to see us wear these hot outfits and shake ass. But it's like, what if I don't have ass to shake? What if I'm a little booty bitch? Yeah, <laughs> you know? I mean, I definitely have a little booty, but you know, <laughs> I, I'll still give you guys the booty, but like we can do both. Like two things can be true at the same time. Thank you, you know what I mean? Exactly. I'd be dancing while I'm engineering, like in the chair, like I'm raging Period. to the songs that I'm producing and mixing in the moment. Yeah, I think that's another huge, issue is like can we be these sexual icons and also be a ceo and a business person and i think like i'm gonna like i still look forward to the day when we're like wearing your outfit and the man on the other line is like yeah i have your drop and ship orders ready to go we have like your 10 employees like on payroll like let's like these meetings that we're having now with for our businesses but you can wear a corset while you're in the meeting <laughs> exactly yeah and it's it's hard because it's like you know speaking with different investors you know these different men who might be interested to work and like a lot of the time when I'm in these conversations, which is why I switched to just 100% investing in myself. I don't mm. take outside investment mm. um, at, at this point because I just haven't really met anybody that I mesh with because I feel like they want to do whatever they want to do. But yes. Maybe they have no experience in the music industry and they just have a lot of money. But then I bring in someone who may also be a woman but has experience or I know better what to do because I have family in the industry, yeah. things like that, you know, what to do with the money, but then they don't want to listen and they just want to act like... Yeah. Like, they, like let's you know spend, what? We're let's gonna, spend 250K, like, putting you on in front of a... An, an artist that is super famous like that's dumb that's Speak not about it no you know. and i obviously a lot of us girls have had the sugar daddy music industry manager whatever the fuck they are um we're gonna come back to that let's talk about your family you mentioned your father is a musician correct yes my dad Crazy. he's an incredible drummer i mean he is really really gifted he even wrote like a drum book where he teaches wow. these different African rhythms. He's wow. played for Ricky Martin, oh my, God. my past vocal coach, Miss Betty Wright. Um, my, nice. I guess now she's my ex stepsister cause my dad and her mom got divorced, but my, my ex stepsister, Joss Stone. What? Um, <laughs> she was my stepsister my whole life growing up. Holy shit. So, yeah. Um, so I have a lot of family in the industry and um, extremely talented people. Yeah. You know, even my, my late vocal coach she was like I always called her my music mama you know yeah. she she was everything to me so you know 
those three influences were super big, especially as well as my mom who sang to me while I was in the womb. Aww. So, you know, it's, you it's guys, a lot of shout music. Shout out to Joss Stone. <laughs> like, hey, girl, hey, what is she? Is she working on anything right now? I, I honestly have no idea. Okay. I know that she has a family okay. um, and I see her posting and stuff. But, you know, our families kind of parted ways. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I grew up looking up to her so much. Like the reason I have oh, a nose shit. ring is because I loved her nose ring growing yeah. up. And like when I was 15, I got to go just like uh, to New York and just watch her do what she does. Photo shoots, interviews. Wow. Um, you know, I, th I think she did the Kelly and Michael show. Okay. Um, and I went and I got to see her perform barefoot and stuff. So I was Crazy. just like, you know, so inspired by her growing up. Yeah. So, that's yeah. incredible. Okay. So you're like 10, 11, 12 years old. What's going on with you musically? Like, obviously Joss mm -hmm. was a huge part of that, but like, how did you become a songwriter? How did you get into music? So when I was a little kid, my dad was living in England at the time and he had this like songwriting music sort of like club slash upstairs there was like a school. Mm -hmm. So I, I remember recording a cute song that some of the girls who were going there wrote and I just Whoa. recorded my own version. And then when I was... I think nine, I wrote my first song in the shower. Oh my God. <laughs> I was like in the nine. shower and I had to like get out. I still, it's, I have the whole song. I'm like, wow. I should kind of produce this out because yes. it, it might be a hit. <laughs> it's a really, it's really good. That's why oh I'm like, dang, God. like still looking back, I'm like, this is catchy. Like, you know. Do you know what's so <laughs> crazy? I was just listening to Chapel Roan on Drew F. Wallow's podcast. Mm hmm. And Chapel said during lockdown, she's like, I quit music. I had no money. I moved back in with my parents. And then all of a sudden, one day she was like remembering who she was as a child. And she was like, you know what? If I'm going to do the pop thing, I'm going to do it a thousand percent and put my feet into the ground and stick to it. And I'm going to celebrate my inner child and she's like as soon as i started celebrating i'm getting chills my yeah oh my god my whole body is chills the little girl version of me is she said the day it all started to happen the songs her look the hair the costumes the people started coming to her and saying this is it it's hot in here guys Woo! and i am cold <laughs> like the chills my whole yes! arms my hairs are standing up yeah because you know what i feel like that's something i've struggled with a lot in just finding like who i am what my sound is i'm so inspired by so many different kinds of music you know being inspired by joss with with soul and you know jazz yeah. growing up and then oh my dad also played with jeff beck um wow yeah, yeah so then you know going to these rock shows as a teenager and stuff and just being inspired by so much i was in a rock band in high school and a metal yeah. band and all this stuff wow. and like i've just done so many styles of music mm -hmm. but then being so inspired by like kesha and lady gaga and that like especially gaga like that gothic pop yes. feel thing is so cool and so like moving into my adulthood and finding my own sound and stuff i always wanted to be this like pop star but then i fell into this like more rock space yeah which i love yes but I Lately, actually, just the last week, the songs I've been writing have just been a lot more like at my roots, like what my inner child, like that, that preteen, that teenager, like love to listen to just like mm -hmm. 2011 era, like yes. when Just Dance was coming out and all Hell that yeah. stuff. And I'm seeing a few artists popping up like Snow Wife and mm -hmm. all these different artists who are bringing back that type of sound. And I kind of feel like maybe that's the direction I want to move in, yes. like moving forward. Yeah. So, <laughs> well, and also like I'm just riffing off of everything she's saying cuz it's just so aligned. Y2K is back with a vengeance. Like loving Y2K. 100%. Yeah. And we even see um what's her name? The Canadian chick. The dancer, singer, pop star. I mean Tate McRae. Yeah, Tate McRae. Okay, Tate I didn't McCray. know she, I didn't know she was Canadian. Oh yeah, she's Canadian. Okay. Uh, Tate. <laughs> Tate is like everyone's like wanting her to be the new Britney. You know what I mean? Which is like, of course she's different, but okay. That's interesting. <laughs> Cause I feel like somebody's compared her to like Britney or like those types of artists. And Tate McRae is more like 
a hip hop vibe to me. She's a pop star, but like she's so she's a cool. Dancer. Yeah. Like, you know, like Tanache vibes. Mm-hmm. Like Tanache is not the next Britney Spears, you know. Like, right, right, right. She's just Tanache. You yeah. know what I mean? Like Tate McRae is Tate McRae. We don't need another Britney Spears. We no, already had that. Not at all. But the point you being know? is like everyone's here for it. You know what I mean? She is a vibe. Where is like I've been through three like big moments like record deals in my career and the second one i decided to dye my hair black and i was like really into the amy winehouse vibe and like stopped doing the my first album was pop rock produced by mutt lang and so that was the first sound the second sound was like okay now i'm gonna go amy winehouse with black hair and then i came back into my pop era but when i decided to come back into the pop era it was being hated on there you go it wasn't popular it wasn't cool Then fast forward to this year, one of my friends, Gigi, she's in a movie and she's like, I need music. So I go back into the archives and I'm like, let me find my Y2K Britney shit. And because of you, Gigi, I released a full EP. Love you, Gigi. Yeah, (laughs) a full EP called Play. um, And it's all Y2K pop cuts. And I'm like, it's being accepted and adored right now because we're in that zone I, I love that so yeah it's like why not it's so crazy because it's just this like frequency shift on planet earth especially for artists where we're like wait can we do what we want yes <laughs> we can if yeah. you're an artist you can do whatever the fuck you want <laughs> have fun that's literally the point yeah right yeah but i think the reason and this is just my hot take is like major labels should go away forever um, they make people famous, but like they're making $78 million a day right now. Wh- wait, what? $78 million a day. They are. And that is why artists like Ray are like, you guys need to start paying for everything and giving writers points on the masters because they, they are act like they can't afford to pay for anything. I know. That's, That's a fact. insane. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Right. Ra- if you're making that much money, there is no reason why a writer should be showing up to a session and not being paid hourly. Yeah. You can afford to pay a writer even minimum wage, just like something for their time. Like even if the song doesn't get used, it's like, well, I just dedicated this time, you know, with your artist that you're, you know, trying to build this project for. And maybe this song led us to the next one. Like yeah. my time should be that's crazy it's crazy and wow. also we have artists like queen irby who are like building she's fire their, she's fire but like her and nick were signed and then they left the label and nick was like let's make you the star and he started producing her shit mm. and now they have two million organic fans that truly love her and now she's selling out huge venues and they're making their own money <laughs> they don't have to give the masters to a label like we're in a time now where artists are like, wait, but we know how to do it. So we're good on the 360 deal. And you know what? It, it's crazy that you're saying that because my new song that I'm dropping at the end of August literally goes, we are so done because you can't see that you're taking advantage of me. Oh, yes. Period. Yeah. Which I have memorized the lyrics because I've seen the reels <laughs> on your Instagram. Amazing. Great. I love that. But yeah. Literally, like, and you could take that and it could be about a relationship, but it could also be about labels. Like, yep. it, labels Anything. do take advantage. And, and that's also the thing as an independent artist is that it can be a little bit scary to not be working with a label as well because when you're on your own let's say you don't have other side hustles or other side businesses it's like where do I find money to invest in myself yeah. and then you want to work with like you know just an independent investor an angel investor whatever the case may be but what if that person tries to take advantage of you you yep. know I have friends who are in um well they're not independent but they're working with like you know private you know individuals and then they're still being taken advantage of yeah similarly you know, to the way that the label might do that. And so it's just like, as an artist, you have to be so on top of it. You have to study. You can't just be into the music. Like you have to study the law. You have to study like contracts. You have to study as many things as possible. And it really does take like 10 years to just be at a place where you could even like begin pursuing. Because not only do you have to obviously be good at making music, which takes a ton of time and effort, Mm -hmm. but you have to learn about the business or else you will get taken advantage of. 
Boom, period. Oh my God. I was just having this conversation. I have this talk with artists all the time. You, there's two numbers, y'all. It's your writer ID and your publisher ID number. Mm -hmm. A lot of writers don't have a publisher ID number. I don't know if you do. I do. Okay. Kadara does. I have a friend who I've been making songs with him and he still doesn't have publishing. Boom. And I'm so irritated because he's yes. so talented. And he's like, no, you can just have my publishing. And I'm like, okay, if we get a sync, I'm still gonna give you like your money, you know? Because it's the you principle deserve it. Of but, it like, though. but like you should not be signing paperwork that says you don't own it because some people might not be as nice as me. Like I might just take, like if our song gets a $250,000 sync, Boom. that's publishing money. I don't have to give you a cent of it if you sign a paper. Hell yeah. You know, like get it. Like it's free on, at BMI, right? And it's yep. like what, 50 and bucks? ASCAP. Isn't it like 50 bucks to sign up for ASCAP? I don't or know. I've now? been with ASCAP for a hundred fucking years. So I, you know, my yeah. shit is on lock because I have been fucked over multiple times. And the investor shit I've been taken advantage of. Even for House of Royale, there was an investor and he wanted to spend 50 G's on the music video instead of shooting the first episode. And I that had to walk away. Sense. I mean, we did the music video, but it felt so disgusting because it wasn't my decision. And it and the and you know, I wanted to give the woman directing the video her flowers, but like I knew that she was using me to get his money. And so it's like now that relationship's fucked. You know what I mean? It's like Ugh, All there's of just that. like so much I don't want to say politics but like there's kind of it so is. much politics to this like like people don't really understand how much it takes to get to the point where you are releasing even just one song let alone a whole project yeah with a music video especially if you are working with other people and if you're not like you have to think about how much work that person had to put in not only spending their whole life creating this this you know piece of art but also finding something that will make them enough money to be able to even invest in it so that yeah. they can make their own choices about like what to do with it and things like that. So, and also <laughs> let me bring this to everyone's attention. Lana Del Rey did not know that she was supposed to submit her music to get voted on for a Grammy. And that's why she finally got nominated is because she finally submitted her shit. Can and I'm just like, wait, what, what, what no, were you going to say? Uh, <laughs> Dear A&R executives, dear management, dear label, like, are you guys out of your fucking minds? Like, Lana should have been winning Grammys since day one. Well, why weren't they submitting it for her? It's like you're taking probably like 60, 70, 80, even 90 percent of the money and you're not doing your literal only job. It's crazy. Your only job. It just shows that so much information is gatekept. And there are not mentors that are going, hey, dear artist, this is what you need to do in order to win and slay. Like, people just aren't telling other people what to do. That's so sad. And you know what? And, and that just brings me right back to, like, I'm so grateful that I had the vocal coach that I had, rest in peace, Miss Betty Wright. Like, she taught me so much. She didn't gatekeep any information. Yep. She was, I think, like, on the Grammy board or, or something yes. like that. So, you know, that was, like, a common conversation that, yep. like, we would talk about like, oh, people are submitting for Grammys. You know, like she would just tell me, we, you know, instead of just doing a voice lesson, like we would have a business lesson sometimes. Hell yeah. You know, so obviously I came and I learned, you know, my voice and whatever. But then some days I'd show up and she'd be like, we're going to do a business lesson today because I'm training you to become a freaking pop star, a rock star. We're going to, you know, do vo uh, vocal warm ups running up and down the freaking stairs. Yeah. You know why? Because... We're getting Beyonce you ready for is the doing reality. That. Yeah. <laughs> like Beyonce can move around and sing at the same time. So why shouldn't Period. we, you know? Yes. And so it's like, it, when I think about it, not every artist is as lucky, you know, it's very divine. Yep. Like all of the things that have been provided to me and offered to me in my entire life, just like growing up the way it was all set up for me yes. to have the knowledge and the skills that I have mm -hmm. and I I'm so grateful for it. Yeah. But that's why we need to have these conversations like this right now so that we can inform more people Yes, because you know, that's something I wasn't even really thinking about. Like I should be screaming it from the rooftops to let other artists know. Yeah. I mean, Ray is like winning awards and she's like, no, I'm going to take this time to tell you guys, this is not a joke. It's not a joke. 
we need to ask for this, this, and this for writers. When people say, why has it not happened for you yet? What I love to tell people is when we look at artists like Taylor Swift, all of the stars have to align. Your management, your team, the contracts, you being a knowledgeable artist, your management taking care of you, doing all the right things. I mean, it's literally like if you want to win any type of competition, you have, like it's like a pageant. You have yeah. to follow the rules. Your speech has to be great. Your choice of talent has to be amazing. Like you have to follow the fucking rules and the people running your shit have to be doing it right. And that's what the general public does not understand. They think, oh, you can just win the voice and now you have a full blown career. It's like, okay, how many people who won the voice are on the radio right now? Boom. Or like on the charts on Spotify right now? Mm hmm. I, I can't think of any. Right. So Taylor is a congresswoman. Katy Perry is a congresswoman. They are business people. They are handwriting letters to their fans. They're connecting with their fans. I mean, it's a 24 hour a day job. There's so many artists too out here that are like, but I just love to do music. And it's like, well, then don't do yeah. the business. Yeah. Then just make music. Right. Have fun. I mean, maybe submit your songs if you want people to, you know, be able to hear them, submit yeah. them to other artists that are already doing all that. But if you don't, want to be a politician like boom <laughs> when you're an artist you're also kind of like a politician like yeah. you are balancing so many things you yeah. have to you know be diplomatic in the way that you handle things with people you have to you know put on a front sometimes you have to you know hide the way that you may actually be feeling about something because yes. in order for you know this piece to get done for this project to get done. Like there's a lot of diplomacy involved in it. And also for those of you who are trying to get publishing deals or trying to get booked for work in general, it's like, how are you displaying your Instagram and TikTok? I mean, obviously TikTok is probably more important. I don't, I don't know. I personally think that YouTube is the most important. Okay. Hot and take. I also think that YouTube is the easiest to go viral on personally. Oh, wow. Personally. Like, okay. I'll have little cute talking videos that do mm. well on YouTube. Yeah. I have my guess who's singing videos that will do really well on YouTube. I have one that hit 11 million views wow. a few months ago. Holy and so shit. literally I had 3000 followers in February. I now have 54,000. What? Just because I started posting on shorts consistently every day. Oh my God. I needed to hear this people. Cause I've been, I have not been posting shorts. Post shorts. Holy Take Christ. Take this podcast and turn it into shorts. I will. Watch what happens. Every single clip that I've posted on Insta and TikTok, I'm supposed to be posting on shorts. Yep. And it's just so mentally draining that yeah. I'm like, here's the third platform. So, so YouTube, I would prioritize that one mm -hmm. because the thing is is that that's where your music videos will go yeah that's where everything will go that's where they are right so if you build up your youtube yep you can tag a related video mm -hmm. like under a short yes. so even if it's a podcast clip you can tag your new song or Boom. your new music video you get a million people that watch that clip now you've got maybe ten thousand more views twenty thousand more views on that you know, related video. Yeah. But then you may have a few more fans because yep. of that who are like, wait, I actually really like the song. Yes. And so I think that YouTube just makes it so easy to convert those fans. Yeah. And then obviously people who find you as an artist, like on YouTube, they might go to Spotify or Apple music. Maybe they use YouTube music as their main, yeah. you know, you never know, but that can always translate to elsewhere. Whereas like, TikTok has made it a little bit better where you can like save a song to your Spotify and stuff like that. But yeah. I feel like it's a lot harder to go viral on TikTok. Because the algorithm. Yeah, the algorithm's really oh, yeah. different there mm -hmm. now. Like videos that I have going viral on YouTube and even my new Instagram account are not going viral on TikTok. Um, wow. So I know that they're viral content videos, but TikTok just like is suppressing. So I for my new single that I'm actually like working on and um, doing just the pre-release, pre-save strategy or whatever, yeah. I'm actually focusing on a new Instagram account I have okay. and my YouTube channel. And I'm still posting on TikTok, mm -hmm. but I'm not really expecting much from TikTok. Wow, yeah. you guys. Yeah. Listen, Gen Z has spoken. Fuck TikTok. No, I'm kidding. Not, no, not, I, not fucking. I love it. Okay, listen. My TikTok, <laughs> I, have, I almost have 97,000 followers. Wow. So we're getting close to 100K. It's my biggest platform. Like, Holy. I love TikTok and I, I'm, I love my TikTok. I'm just, 
right now, I don't really care about the number of followers I have. I care about the number of views I'm getting, the amount of engagement I'm getting, yes. like the connection I'm having with people. Boom. Um, you know, YouTube is also a place where I'm able to have memberships. So like without having to have a Patreon or anything extra. So like you can create this whole community there. And huh. then it's like, once you start getting that real bread, that real money, you start putting out you know music videos whatever you want to put out wow. now that fan base is already built up there okay so are you making money from youtube i i do make some okay i i, I, I don't make a ton of money on youtube because okay. shorts don't pay you as much as long form but oh. yeah it's enough to be worth like posting every day and also on youtube you can schedule your shorts so i spend one day scheduling my shorts for the month and I make sure I have at least one going up oh every day. God. And then if I make new content throughout the month that like I want it to come out like, you know, sooner than the next month, I'll just like schedule it to go up like the next day or whatever, you know, like a little at and a different time. For a or whatever. short, how much copy is in the like description? Like, is it just four words or is it like a lot? Um, I don't put any descriptions on my really? shorts unless i'm like trying to get somebody to like you know pre-save like i'll add a description with like a link or something oh my but god are you talking about the description or are you talking about like the title both so for the title it'll be like if it's a guess who's singing it'll be like can you guess who's singing maybe hashtag singing wow and then like i posted a video the other day um like hyping my friend up and i was basically like <laughs> if your friend is like this hot and you're not questioning your sexuality every time you look at them, like, what are you doing? And so, like, the title, I literally just titled it, Am I Gay? Okay, <laughs> like, perfect. You know, like, very, like, simple. Yeah. And you just keep the keywords, like, in the title. You don't necessarily have to hashtag. A, a lot of these algorithms, no. I feel like, are optimized to read your keywords without you having to hashtag. I think that's what stops me in my tracks is knowing that I'm going to have to do like episode 57, Stan Taylor singing no. da 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 da. Don't do that. But, okay. No, just be like, whatever we're talking about. Yeah. Like, if we're talking about like female engineers, like, you know, you'd be like, female engineers hot take on this or yeah. like, you know, I, I wouldn't actually put the episode title. Like, I would just put whatever you're actually talking about in the clip. Yeah. Like a quick little synopsis, a couple words. And then in your related video, tag the full length podcast. Right. And then if people like what you're talking about, then they're going to go and watch the podcast where yeah. they'll see that it's episode 57 or right. whatever. Well, and that's what I was doing. Listen, I just needed the reminder to get back into that game because it's just so much. You know what I yeah. mean? Yeah. Well, how do you feel about Twitter? Because I feel like I'm just like, running on fumes like i'm doing twitter too and it's like ugh. i don't use twitter okay i've never really like twitter didn't hit for me yeah personally well okay here's a little tip if you guys hate your photos on google images a great way to change and fix your seo images is through twitter <gasps> that is something i didn't know look at us sharing all of the like the the tea. key little t points yeah I'm, i love it yeah because Google can be a motherfucker. And if you want your best photos to be at the top, tweet them out. Tweet them out. I love that. So, yeah. I've no. been like posting like little photos to threads here and there, mm -hmm. but I'll do it on Twitter now. Yeah. Because I don't, you probably don't even have Facebook, but like. I do. I oh, do. Okay. Because my photos will, from Facebook, it's blurry and not, not clear. Really? So blurry. Weird. Twitter, Getty, Instagram. Clear images, Google images. Because, you know, people will Google our names. That's true. And we I want... Google my own name. Yes. You know, at least once a month. That's another to great see what's going piece on. of advice. Right? <laughs> I need to know, like, what's happening. Has anything new happened? Are there any articles? You yeah. Know? Oh, I just found yeah. out someone's using Rochelle Royale for OnlyFans. Like, I've never even been on OnlyFans, and I was, like, curious because oh, I'm, God. like... You know, I, I, I want to put the show on OFTV, by the way, it's, that's going to happen. So okay. I created a page for House of Royale and I, I had to do House of Royale because someone's using fucking Rochelle Royale. Whoops. So, and I, but I can't find any photos or anything, so oh. it's fine. Oh, geez. Well, <laughs> shout out Rochelle Royale. Right? <laughs> <laughs> you better have a snatched whatever's going on. Um. Right? It better be good. <laughs> yeah. You better be like using it. You better be posting it every day. You better make the most of that name, girl. Okay? Because like on Instagram, 
Kidara was one H. Yeah. Like doesn't exist. Like nobody has it. Like I think somebody used to have it like years ago, but maybe it was like a ghost account and then like Instagram like removed it, but they, they never made the at name available again. So annoying. So and I've like checked from other people's accounts because I was like, maybe the the person like with the one H blocked me because they didn't want me to like see it or something. No, from other people's accounts, it literally doesn't exist. Ugh. So I'm like, so now so I need annoying. to get famous enough that I have to physically contact Instagram, show right. up at the office and be like, hey, can you guys like, you know, boom, open this Same. name up. There is <laughs> an actual living person with a legal name as Rochelle Royale. And I've asked her politely so many times. And it's just, you know, some people don't want to give up their name. <laughs> Fair. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> yeah. If you came through with enough bread, like maybe. <laughs> No, no, no. She was <laughs> like, this is my name. I don't know who you are. And then one day she was like, why are people messaging me about music? And I'm like, because really? you won't give me the at name. <laughs> it's just, and that's the other thing. I just want to tell all the artists out there. If people don't know what you do yet, you just have to take a step back and not get angry. Cause like people really don't know what the fuck we do. Like people will message it. me and be like, do you sing? And it's like, bitch, my handle is Rochelle around music. Like, <laughs> Yeah, you know, I had a friend who brought this up like yesterday mm -hmm. and she said that she sent her new album like to one of her best friends from, you know, like middle school, whatever. Mm. They're still friends. She sent like the link or whatever to the YouTube, whatever. And her friend had been like days crickets, like didn't even respond. And it's like, oh, wow, it's just weird Yeah, because it's like, even if you don't do music and like you don't get it, like if you know I've been working on something for five years, which this girl has, it's like, oh my God, not even like a good job, like congratulations. You know, like I'm not saying you have to like give up, give up your firstborn child, like, you know, yeah. trying to congratulate me, but like, like you could say something, you could double tap it, you could heart it, but it's like weird how friends will just not support, not support you at all. Right. And the other thing that, we cannot get frustrated about this, people, is people want to comment on our outfit, how we look, our hair, makeup, like, even if, like, I could be on the mic singing a clip of, like, a powerful song and the vocals hitting and it's amazing. And I'm expecting people to be like, great vocal, great song, love the song. Yeah. But no, people are like, Oh my God, your hair. Oh my God, you're so beautiful. It's like, wait, are you not, do you not are get you what not this is about? Are you not paying attention to the <laughs> fact that I've spent my entire life learning how to sing like this? Right. Like literally every day of my life up until this day, I have sang at some point every day practicing so that I could do this at this level of skill. Yeah. Like people just like don't get it. No. And, and maybe that's partly because of the way that the music industry like changed and now music is free, you know, yeah. and, and or, or very cheap. Like you don't have to spend ten dollars on an every album, you mm -hmm. know. So people like just expect music. Yeah. But like if you really think about it, if every artist just stopped making music and there was no music and like all the music that ever existed, like got deleted and people just stopped making music. Right. Yeah. No music. Think about what your life would actually be like without any music. Well, and also think about every time an artist dies is when we finally go back to their catalog and we're like, oh my God, they were a genius. Mm -hmm. It's like, cause it like takes tragedy to get humans to wake up. Oh. Also yeah. what I've noticed for myself and I'll cut you guys some slack here. If I'm watching a TV show, like let's say it's like a hot, sexy vampire show mm, and a those. song comes on and I'm like, oh, what song is this? It really does. We have such a different reaction to music when we don't know what the artist looks like or their name. That's true. I feel like when we see a pretty girl posting about a song, we dismiss it so quickly. And it's, it's really sad that that happens because... Because we're musicians, but we do, we get judged by how hot or sexy. If we are hot or sexy, yeah. it's like, oh God, this, I, I'm not. I don't have time to listen to this song. It's almost like I, like Sia putting like a a, a wig over her face. That was it's, a good marketing technique, unfortunately. Right. <laughs> you know. It's almost like she's proving the point of like, 
I'm not even going to have a face. Yeah. I'm just going to let you guys watch Maddie dance. And her, like her too. The artist, her. She, oh, yeah. she did that too. Yes. Yeah. Like she was like on TV shows, all kinds of stuff as a kid even. And then it was like, she blew up as an adult, you know, mature artist when she took her face out of it. Boom. I know. It's so sad. It's sad, but you know, at the same time, if the music is great and there is no face, it forces and people, people love it. Yeah. to listen to the music, listen to the skill set. Yeah. You know, and just just take that in for what it is. Right. Rather than like, okay, well, like, who is this person and what do they look like? And I also feel like part of like the thing we were talking about earlier where I've been struggling with like, what is my sound? Like, who mm -hmm. am I? Comes a lot with the image. Oh it's my like, God. oh, well, do I look like what my music sounds like? Whew. And that's a whole thing. It's when always a whole thing. It's just super confusing. Like, especially as a woman, because we are so judged, you know, like if I'm going on stage to perform, obviously, like I want to look put together, but like, yeah. I shouldn't be so conditioned to feel like, okay, I need to make sure that like my hair looks perfect rather than like doing my vocal warm ups to actually yes. sound good. Fuck. You know? <laughs> yeah. But that, and all of this being said, especially for the ladies, just do whatever the fuck you want and make sure you're feeling good internally because that's how we get to a better place musically is if we yeah. feel hot and sexy and good about ourselves, then we can get back to the artistry. So it's like, you know, it just that's sucks true. that it's, it is so much about image, but you can do posts where you're not showing your face or body and it's just the song. I mean, we have the option to do that and it's like, just mix it up. That's true. And it doesn't always have to be your face. It could be, that's what I love about the podcast is it doesn't yeah. always have to be me. I can just post you talking about you on my fucking Instagram. That's and true. And it feels so good. You know what I yeah. mean? Yeah. It is really nice to just like take your face out of it sometimes. Yeah. But you know, that's not as much my strategy, but you're I like, will I'm say, using my face. well, I mean, <laughs> which I've, you should. I've been trying <laughs> this face. <laughs> yeah. no. <laughs> we need like a little sound effect, like a ding. Oh, I will. No, I have sound effects. Are you kidding me? Yeah. Slay. I love that. But, but I have been thinking about how I can take it off of, obviously I want to look cool. Like I want to be consistent with my style, but kind of take it off of like what I'm wearing, what I look like mm -hmm. and put it on to like responding to comments, responding to what people mm -hmm. are talking about, responding to like what's going on in the culture and then using my song to answer a yes. question or answer something and use my lyrics and my artfulness to say, Hey, if you're struggling with this, you know, like this is what I would say to you. Yes. You I know, and, and just making it a little bit deeper because there's something about just putting out a song. It's like, people don't care about your song. Like nobody cares about your song. Nobody cares about you. Like, but they will begin to care about you. If you can show them, you know, the message. Hey, I have a message that can connect with something that's going on in your life. If you're struggling with your relationship or if, if people are taking advantage of you or, you know, you know, guys or whatever, like, this song is the blueprint to how to help with that. Or this song will be something that you can connect with or just relate to and make you feel heard or like yeah. anything along those lines. And I feel like it does work better when you do that. Mm -hmm. um, so I've, I've, I've noticed that like for my videos, I, I tend to see more response when I'm responding to a comment and then I'll like say something and then it leads into my song. Yeah. You know, like, so I have to say something about it. I have to give my actual two cents on the, you know, the matter or the topic or whatever. And, and people are like responding to it. They're commenting more because they have something to engage with. Yeah. But if you just post you singing a song, there's not really much to engage with. There's not as much of a conversation. Yeah. It's like, you got to start a conversation with people. You, you're, it's just like this. Mm -hmm. When I post a song online, it's me having a conversation with someone individually directly. Like when yeah. you look at your phone, it's not you're performing for a million people on stage. You are talking to one person. Right. And so that's how you have to create that content. Yes. And I've noticed like the captions are so helpful because you're really putting the lyrics in people's faces. A lot of people are just listening to the top line. They're not hearing the lyrics. You mm -hmm. guys, you have to dissect the lyrics. Hello, we are songwriters. It is about the fucking lyrics. Let's get into production. Okay. Shout out to Scarlet Park. Shout out to Dream Girl Scarlet, Dream Girl producer bag. Okay, 
Scarlett has a partnership with Guitar Center um, for her new Dream Girl production bag. And it's this That's bag. awesome. Yeah, you can take it to the beach. You can take it to the top of a mountain. You can record in a cave. You can record wherever the fuck you want. And oh, I it's, need that. Yeah, it's um, purple interior. It says Dream Girl on the front. Like, it's... But her whole point of doing this is if you're a girl learn how to produce yeah where did it start for you yeah oh my gosh when I was 15 years old I started producing wow I was dating this guy um and we had this like band together and he produced everything on logic and the whole time we were together you know we were together for two years he was encouraging me to start producing but he was like so good that I just felt like, how can I ever catch up, you know? Ugh. Yeah. And so it was, <laughs> this is so crazy. It was, I got to a point where we were breaking up and getting back together a lot just towards the end of the relationship as it was falling apart. And I was so just distraught that I needed an outlet. Like I desperately needed an outlet. And so I picked up GarageBand mm. and I wrote this like seven minute song wow. about basically what was going on between us. And I showed it to him and he knew what it meant as he was listening to it, that we were definitely going to be breaking up for the last time. But mm. the first thing he said to me after it ended was, I'm so proud of you <gasps> for doing this. And I mm. love him to death for that. Like, I will always love that guy. Like mm. he's a good person. And I'm like coming to tears because we helped each other so much become like who we are Oh, teary. I know, yes. right? Like, it's really emotional. Because men usually are the predators and men usually put us in such dangerous, weird scenarios. Yeah. And it's like when a guy is actually like, no, I want to help you. No, he was, he's a really good guy. You know, I, we went years without talking. And then, you know, I reached out to him to kind of like tell him exactly what I just told you. Like, that, I feel like he made such a, a, big impact on my life even my name came from that song because wow. I didn't know what to call the song because it's like the seven minute song so me and my late vocal coach we came up with a name that just felt right and we called it Kidasaru it just was like a word that we created you know oh my god and so I found out that Kida means raising away the darkness in wow. the uh, Native American language Kiawa and so it took oh me a while to kind of put it together but like Kidara came together and oh. so like my literal name that I created for myself came from that relationship wow like that wouldn't have happened if I didn't write that song about that relationship so you know that's really where production started for me and like yeah. everything is so deep when you're an artist you know and don't get it <laughs> twisted okay when a woman enters a man's life we are bringing the glitter and the fire and the magic okay we're not giving all the credit to this dude no no <laughs> no but he did help you and that's so powerful yeah no by no means like obviously I made it like you you know, not not giving. Should I wait for you to <laughs> crack Boom. your liquid death? Yes. Shout out liquid death. Yes. We love you. Um, but yeah, no, I mean, it's just like it's it's more to say, like, if it wasn't that, I'm sure it would have been something else. It's the story. But it's like that's how it happened that's on this happened. particular timeline in this universe. Yes. And, you okay, know, I'm so grateful for it. <laughs> fast forward to now. OK, mm -hmm. bitches like me need to hear a speech from you. Okay. Okay. Speech, 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 speech. Yes. And okay. So during lockdown, I was learning pro tools. Crazy shit went down. Traumatic stuff. Oh and I closed the computer and I was like, I'm done. Mm. I needed to take a step back. Now that I know DaVinci Resolve, I'm the editor for the pod. Now mm -hmm. I'm back into a mindset where I'm like, I can do this. Period. I'm healed. Soleil. We love it. So my mans and i the other day finally opened pro tools and i relearned how to track vocals on there and then the other night we opened logic pro and i was tracking vocals i had him tracking my vocals but i'm ready so you as a producer what do you suggest for a newbie like me what program what da what should i do oh my gosh well so like the first thing the most important thing, I don't care what DAW you're on. I don't care if you're using GarageBand for $5. Like, I, I don't care what you're producing on. 
if you want to produce, just never stop producing. Woo! Seriously, because I sucked when I first started. <laughs> and I, to this day, I make things that suck. You know what I mean? But you will learn. There's so much to learn when yes. it comes to producing. Like, there's a ridiculous amount to learn. It really did take me, like, a decade to get to the point where, like, I can take on a sync deal where I'm producing, you yes. know, the songs myself and things and mixing and mastering them. I went to college for audio engineering. Like, it takes a lot. And so... If you just get in your head and you're like, oh, but like, I can't do it. And I suck. Like, stop thinking about releasing the songs. Don't release anything if you don't feel proud of it. But like, keep making music. Yeah. Because as you watch, you know, YouTube tutorials, as you just learn like the names of things, as you keep studying and keep making, like, you're just going to get better. better. That's how it works. That's exactly what Scarlett was saying. Shout out to Liquid Death. <laughs> Death. Um, Scarlett was like, once you learn the information, you retain it. So she's like, it's not always going to be calculus. Yeah. It's like you're going to know it and just trust that your brain is going to absorb that information. Can we talk about vocal chain? Well, oh, yeah. Wait, I have something to say because yeah. so for production, what I did. This is just kind of how it happened for me. Nobody told me to do this. This is just what I did. I would decide like every day or every week or like whenever I was going to sit down to work on something, mm -hmm. I would decide, okay, today I want to learn about reverbs. Mm. And I would make a whole song, whether it sounded good or not, but I'd like zone in on just like one song, fixate on that mm -hmm. and use reverbs in a creative way. Yeah. Like on every track, I'd use a different reverb. I'd learn how to use the reverb plugin. So if the next one was like, I want to learn how to use oscillators mm -hmm. and learn how to create sounds that are like, you know, EDM dubstep sounds, I'm going to make a song that's like fully inspired by just that one element of, you know, that plugin or just that one plugin. So I like really would fixate on very yes. specific things. Love and it. so instead of thinking like, oh, like I want to learn everything all at once, yeah. like chill, chill, focus on learning how to use each thing proficiently. Such great advice. You know? Great advice. Yeah. For me, I want to be Max Martin. Okay. It's like, like I, when I listen to Bad Blood, okay, that vocal, that top, I mean, what is that vocal chain? How do we get a Taylor Swift sound? That's, that's a good question. I have no idea because I mm -hmm. don't do her music. So I couldn't, <laughs> I couldn't answer that. But, um, just the basics, like EQ. Well, you need a good EQ. Mm -hmm. I like a dynamic EQ. Mm -hmm. I use F6, but okay. Fab Filter is also a really good EQ as well. Okay. Um, you're going to want pro a couple compressors. Mm -hmm. I usually will. So like on my vocal chain, I'll put like an LA-2A. Mm -hmm. And then I also will use a lot of the time Abbey Road because it, it's a compressor, but it also adds a really nice texture and mm -hmm. grit. And I like a little bit of like Same. grit to the vocal. Yeah. But if you like it super, super clean, then I wouldn't use Abbey Road. But like mm -hmm. my voice comes out so clean that I want to add a little bit of texture. Got it. Um, sometimes a tube can be nice because if you're not recording through a tube mic, you can kind of like artificially add that tube mm -hmm. sound to just make it feel a little more warm. Yeah. Um, I can't think of what specific plugin, but like, there's a lot of tube plugins out there that you could find. Um, I love fresh air from okay. slate. I think, um, that's a free plugin. Moving Scarlett on. was saying that she's <laughs> going to create plugins. Um, that's fire to take over guitar center so that we don't have to purchase <laughs> plugins anymore. That I honestly, I, I think right now I'm focused on being a rock star. Yes. But later on in my career, I would like to make plugins. Mm. I'm such a nerd. Like yes. I love computers. Like I love Hell my yeah. engineering stuff. I think it would be really, really fun to make plugins. Yeah. Um, I've been really obsessed with this guy, Phil Spicer, if I'm pronouncing it right. He does these cool like AI plugins. So oh. like AI is utilized to like make your music sound better. He has oh like God. stutters and EQs and <gasps> pressers and just all kinds of stuff. And I got a bunch of his stuff and my productions have been sounding like really, really cool. What? So yeah, I like him. Holy you should Christ. check out his stuff. Phil Spicer. Because what I want to do for TikTok is just pick a song like 
Miley Cyrus mm. flowers yeah. and just stack the hook and post it on TikTok and be like, I tracked my own vocals. Here's the vocal chain I'm using. Yeah. And just encourage girls. Like I'm learning because I'm pushing other girls to learn. And that's how I want to start. I don't want to yeah. start with making beats. I just yeah. want to focus on vocals. Vocals. Yeah. I mean, so. that's a good place to start. Yeah. And that's the thing is like, there's so many things to learn just to like make a good vocal chain, <laughs> you know? I mean, yes. obviously you have to start with having decent audio recording. So you need a decent mic, you know, you mm -hmm. need a decent interface and all of that. Yep preamps and stuff but once you get all the hardware you need you know start by learning how to eq mm -hmm. you know you don't want to go crazy on an eq just subtractive eqing like that's the most important skill i may have ever learned because that's how you carve out a, vo a vocal okay you know you carve out the voice so you listen to the frequencies mm -hmm. which that's also something you can study like there's so much you can learn like going to college was really helpful for yeah. this you can go on youtube and look up like like frequencies for mm -hmm. engineers to literally just listen to frequencies as they start from you know you know 60 hertz you know all the way up to like you know 10k 12k so you can like hear what the different frequencies sound like so that when you're listening to your vocal you will then hear what frequencies are like popping out yes. and then you can be like oh i don't like that frequency oh there's a lot of like boxiness in like 4k okay let me like subtractively just eq a little bit of that out yeah and if you have a dynamic eq you can set it to kind of like compress and like duck more out mm -hmm. as more of it shoots up like mm -hmm. more of that um frequency i'm not sure if i'm ex explaining this the well best, yeah like if a vocal but, is too bright or if it's too forward and you want more depth and right. you want it to be wider and bigger and thicker right. like it's, like i wouldn't if you if a vocal's too bright i wouldn't necessarily just go like adding a bunch of you know um eq to the lower half i would remove mm -hmm. from the higher half mm-hmm does that make sense? Absolutely. So I mean, the, the great key. thing for me is that I've been recording for so long yeah. that I'm so used to hearing top 40 pop vocals and the producers that I've worked with my whole life. Mm -hmm. I mean, they're comping as we're going and it already sounds like a finished record by the end of the day. So yeah. it's like producers that are at that level. My ear is so overly trained yeah. that it really sucks when I'm working with a producer that's more new because I'm yeah. like, I don't have the language or the skill set to explain to them how yeah. far off the vocal is yeah. to what I want it to be. That was one of the reasons I went to school for audio engineering is because yeah. not necessarily because I wanted to be an audio engineer, which I was an audio engineer for a little bit at a studio. Wow. But <laughs> yeah, well, that's I've done helpful. a lot. But I really went so that I could be a better artist because when I'm yeah. in the studio, like I work with an engineer that works with Kanye West. Yes. You know, why am I able to work with someone like that? Like it didn't just happen out of nowhere. It's because you know. he respects me. Yep. You know, I'm not just working with someone at that level for like no reason. Like it's because he's like, you really like care about this. Hell yeah. And I like your music and you're very talented and all of that, but you care about this. Like I want to spend my time working with you even though you don't have the same budget as, you know, a Kanye or like a Bia right. or like, you know, the, the type of clientele he's normally working with. Yes. Because he believes in me because he sees how much I care. And you can communicate with him. You know right. the terminology, yes. you're educated as opposed to and, I, and like, I have to call myself out, but just like me who are like, I want it to sound like this. And it's like, well, what do you mean? You got to use a the, lot. Yeah. It helps a lot to just educate yourself of the terminology. You know, like yep. I want more attack on this. I want a delay throw here. I want a reverb mm -hmm. throw, you know, I want this to sound brighter, you know, like all of yeah. those terms are really important and helpful. Yes. And that's the thing is like, if you don't care then don't learn it but yeah. if you're picky then you should learn it yes. because you want to be able to accurately describe what sound you're going for yep and so crucial and it, and it speeds up the process like instead of spending all these hours like i can just quickly tell you exactly what i'm hearing yeah Boom. i have been having this talk with um musicians who play live instruments mm -hmm. who are also getting into production mm. 
What is your opinion when you're building a track? Do you have to have live instruments every time or? No, no, of course not. No, not at all. I mean, if you're doing dance music, you definitely don't. You know, that's very like EDM right. inspired. It's pop, but it's not really quite EDM, but it's dance, you know? Yeah. Um, you can add it. It can be really fun. Right. But I don't think it's necessary. And even if you do want it, there's ways to take a sample from Splice and yeah. just make it sound good. And technically that is a real instrument, right? Yeah. If you're using a real instrument sample. Right. But I don't think it's necessary, but I do love it. Like I for love example, a guitar. well, yes, of course. And for writing purposes, I love guitar too. I love <sighs> I love piano. I yeah. love performing live with a band. Yeah. But when you take a song like a Lady Gaga song, for example, yeah. Yeah. like Poker Face, and yeah. you just listen to the instrumental, like let's say you're sitting down to recreate the track for Poker Face. Mm -hmm. It's like you don't have to fucking use live instrumentation no. because all the plugins, like the kick, the synth, whatever is going on, yeah. is right there in your DAW. Like it's. Yeah. Right. No, you, you don't. You yeah. don't need live instruments. No. They can be really helpful yeah. because, you know, sometimes you might be hearing something in your head mm -hmm. and it's like, oh, that would sound really good played by a trumpet. Yes. Oh, that would sound really good played by, you know, a guitar. Yeah. And then the other option is like spending hundreds of dollars on, you know, a plug-in that has very realistic trumpet sounds. So right. it could be more beneficial to just have someone play it. Yeah. And also you can get more just soul by yes. having someone play it. But there's a lot of really cool plugins that allow you to stagger things, kind of make it sound a little imperfect, you right. know, which is what you would get if a real person was playing it. Nobody can play everything perfectly. That's what makes music so beautiful and soulful is like the imperfections in it, right? Yes. I get like giddy about this. Yes. <laughs> and also when you're talking about sync, if you get an email and they're like, okay, we have a show that needs this type of song mm -hmm. and you're like, okay, well, I have six hours to do this mm -hmm. you're not going to be hiring no. musicians you're going to be sitting on your computer and just doing it building out the demo and send it off yeah like send off the stems 100 percent. and i've been doing a ton of stuff for sync with uh this producer i work with glenwood he's really 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 fire and just been really like diving into that mm -hmm. and it's just become this like dream team thing where, you know, we listen to references, you know, they send a lot of references. And so we've been studying like sync and like the sound and sync is very like EDM inspired in a lot of ways. Mm. There's like different areas of sync. So obviously there's like the indie side, yeah. but the side we've been on is like the very like pop rap EDM sounding stuff. K -pop. Yeah. That, that vibe too. And so you don't need live instruments for that at all. Like we'll yeah. sit down. Sometimes we're doing like rush submissions. So we'll sit down and have to make a song in like two hours, three hours, and he'll produce it. I'll write it. You know, sometimes I have some opinions on what we should do with the beat, how we should yeah. arrange it, whatever. He has opinions on my writing. And then we just tie it up with a bow and we submit it. Yeah. No live instruments. Okay. So I know Lyric House because I was with Lyric House for a minute. They do licensing and sync and all that stuff. Do you have any suggestions for artists that are looking for sync deals, like companies that are looking to sign new artists? Because I know it's so oversaturated. I'm not signed for sync. Uh, we want to retain as much ownership over our music as possible. Mm -hmm. So we're not really looking to get signed okay. for sync. But that that's where it can become like tricky and mm -hmm. confusing. Like once you sign, then, you know, this publisher owns every like publishing on everything you make, you know, yes. it depends on what you sign. So we prefer to just retain ownership. So uh -huh. for those songs, it's just those songs. Cause we didn't actually sign anything with them. Yeah. Right. So I prefer to do it like that on a song by song basis. Like maybe I'll sign one song off. Yeah you know, if they really love it and they think it can get a lot of syncs or whatever. But I'm more along the lines of like making the connections with the music supervisors and the agencies directly. And so then when we get our sync fee, like the agent might just get their percentage of the fee. Right. And we still retain ownership of our song. And then yes. it's non-exclusive and we can submit it to as many other, you know, places as we want. And it just gives us more freedom to do what we want to do with our music. Okay, so you guys, word on the street, find out who the music supervisors are. 
and figure it out from there instead of giving all of your stems to a house yeah. and then they own the stems forever. You don't need a middleman. You don't need a middleman if you are willing to do the work and put in the effort, but you have to be willing to talk to people. You have to be willing to connect with people. And I'll be honest, like I'm a little bit newer to this. Like Glenwood is really the one that's been spearheading it and yeah. been really making those connections. Cause it kind of just is like working out for him in yeah. that way. And he's bringing me into it. But now that he's bringing me in, I make those connections and then they contact me directly. Yes. So that's just kind of how it works. You Absolutely. know, make friends, like just be chill, like be a good person. Like I've known Glenwood since the, the year I moved out here. So like almost six years now. Yeah. Like there's and a reason. Also artists, like when you are creating relationships with A&R people, they will be looking at your social media. Yeah, that's true. So whatever's pinned to the top of your page, make sure it's like your best three songs or whatever. Like if you're really like showcasing what you can do yeah. as a writer and an artist, whatever. Well, first impressions are the most important thing. And so you want to make sure that when you make content, when you post things to the top of your page, you're thinking about this is the first thing that someone's going to see mm -hmm. when they're introduced to me. Like yep. if I was saying, hi, how are you? Like that's what that is. And if it's sus or confusing or not, it doesn't make sense to yep. the outside person, you just potentially lost a fan that may have loved your music. Yep. Period. Yeah. Gorgeous. Love it. Okay, so to end the episode, we're going to read the tarot card. But before we do that, you have music coming out. Yeah. So let's talk about that and where everyone can follow and pre-save. Yes. I'm so excited. It's a song called Run Out of Love, and it's just all about not letting anyone take advantage of you anymore. Yes. Like it's, 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 it's kind of a breakup song, okay. but it's about, it's a happy breakup song because it's about finding your truth and finding your power and your strength and saying, you know what? I deserve more than what you're giving me. Hell yes. You know, and I'm not willing to settle for less than what I feel that, you know, I should be treated. And I don't mean like, oh, I want a Birkin. I mean like, Oh, like <laughs> I want a real relationship. I want to yes. call it a relationship. Like I don't want to be in situationships. Like just yep. like the simple things, right? Like I deserve for someone to be so excited about me. Hell yes. Yeah. So that's really what it's about, um, at least from my perspective. But, you know, it could be about a million things. It could also be about like your boss is taking advantage of you at your job and not mm -hmm. paying you enough for what they're asking you to do. It's like, yeah. stop taking advantage of me. Like yeah. I deserve what I deserve. Yeah. Period. Yes. So you can pre-save it. Um, link, link is in my bio, like on Perfect. all of my platforms, which are Kidara at Kidara, K I D A R A H. And on Instagram, there's a second H and yeah. Amazing. Yeah. Okay. Hold your <laughs> card up. Ooh, you guys can book sessions with her online. And she illustrated this deck. And what is Gaga's card? It is the magician, Ooh. which is so perfect for me because I'm a Pisces. I also think that Gaga's a Pisces. Oh. And Pisces are very magical. Yes. And creative. Okay, let's see what it says. Yes. The magician making shit happen. <laughs> Gaga begins the journey by showing us that both skill and faith are required to truly innovate and change the zeitgeist. She pushes you to speak and live your truth in order to manifest your dreams. And the upright means creation, taking action, discipline, imagination, innovation. What is your number? Ones, <laughs> which equals new beginnings. Stop it. My middle name is Faith. Oh, my God. Yeah. And you guys, this is Cardsy B. She's our girl. It's called Badass Bitches Tarot. I love it. Yeah. Such a slay. But Kadara and I are going to illustrate our own tarot decks, which will be for sale next year. I'm down. <laughs> right? A little business collab? Yes. Yeah. I just purchased Christina Ricci's new tarot deck, which I'm receiving in September. I love it. Yeah. Oh, I'm excited. You guys do something today that makes you happy. Give yourself a hug, journal, just, we love you so much and stream Kadara's music to give you clear skin and good luck. It will clear up your skin. <laughs> it's not scientifically proven, but it will. <laughs>
Yes. And if you're a girl, <laughs> learn how to produce. We love you so much. We'll see you later. Bye. Bye.